shelter, you're potentially going into waiting rooms where there are positive people or the potential for exposure. Um, and you, as both of you pointed out, you don't want to expose, if you are sick, you don't want to expose others. And so um, Miriam points out the pulse oximeter is amazing, but I think it's on back order. Like they're really hard to get now. Um, so early on, that was great. Um, the one thing that is amazing is the increase in virtual health. Um, so the ability, if you are concerned, if you do think you can, you're sick, the first thing would be to see if you can have a virtual visit. Um, that person can, the physician on, or provider on the other line can assess, you, can assess your symptoms. And as we learn more about the treatment, Miriam, some of the antibiotics that you described can be offered earlier on and prescribed through a virtual health visit just based on symptoms, risk profile. Um, and the next thing, but of course, if you're struggling to breathe, if you're having increasing confusion, unable to really hydrate and keep up with yourself, that is a reason to seek a higher level of um, medical attention. But starting with a virtual health visit, I think is an excellent option if you're able to. Now that's not always possible for everyone, I understand that. Um, and then the next best would be to go to an urgent care, trying to avoid areas where there are, so emergency rooms tend to be a bit busier. So trying to go to less busy places. As far as being at home, um, if um, the reason we wear masks is actually not to protect ourselves, but to protect others um, and the spread. Um, you want to always practice good hand washing. Um, if you, with young children, it's really hard to isolate. Um, but you may, you want to be mindful of really close. My daughter loves to be in my face at all times. And when I went to the, when I went to work on the COVID unit, we had a big talk about, you know, you can hug me, but when I come in, I have to make sure I take off all my clothes. I get in the shower. I wash my hands. Um, and then it's okay, but, you know, we're going to sleep. You're going to sleep separately. I slept separately. Whether or not that makes a difference, I'm clear. Um, but just being mindful of touching faces and kissing and um, things like that. Um, and then if you can, if you're able to, um, isolating perhaps in a bedroom, um, wearing a mask when you go out, um, those things. I think you did mention, so what do you do if you do have to go to the hospital and you're really not able to recover at home and you have some of the more serious symptoms? Um, the one thing that we have seen, and you don't think about this when you're young and busy and healthy, what do you want should you have to be confronted with? My lungs aren't working anymore and I need a breathing tube. My heart, my kidneys, are not working and I need either dialysis or I need to be resuscitated. Those are really hard questions to confront and they're really hard questions to answer. But they are something that you wanna, if it's possible, begin to think through at home with your loved one and not in the moment of crisis where somebody's calling you and saying, you know, I need to put a breathing tube into your loved one, do you consent? you want to sort of know what were the what were the, the wishes of that individual ahead of time the other thing is that when you go to the hospital i think the isolation jody mentioned this it's real the visitor policies are very strict you can't have a visitor everyone that you see you can't you can barely see their eyes so you don't know who is coming in and out um, so those caring for you, and there's minimal touch because there's minimal entrance. Um, there, that feels isolating to not only the person in the hospital, but also to the family. The family's desperate to connect, desperate to see that their loved one is okay. And we're communicating only by telephone. So communication feels very limited. It doesn't feel like enough. Um, I'll say that um, the nurses have been amazing with trying to help patients because you're so, some of our patients are just so fatigued. Um, it's difficult to even catch their breath to be able to speak, but the nurses have been amazing um, with helping connect um, virtually through Skype or FaceTime um, with their loved ones. 
Um, so that has been, I think, one of the, I think that's one of the things that you need to sort of think about, but it's hard um, when you're young and healthy and think, feel almost invincible. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for, for having the, the courage to bring this to our attention. Uh, I'm very grateful that uh, Jody, Mariam, and your families have recovered and survived. I'm also aware, Rachel, you're bringing up the question of, you know, families need to think about uh, the risk of death and dying uh, and going to the hospital. And it is obviously absolutely terrible and um, difficult to face and no one wants to, but there are some very important questions to be decided, hopefully not in crisis, um, and to, to support a person who's going to go to the hospital and, and, and make decisions as, uh, as a family. I, I wanted to uh, open, open it to conversation and questions. Uh, you, you listened to each other. I'm wondering if there are things that you know, came to your mind or questions that you have uh, here so in much. experience. So yeah. much. Um, so many points. It's almost like reliving it again. I don't know if you feel that way, Marianne. It's like when I'm hearing your story and I'm hearing you talk, Rachel, I, I'm like, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And it makes me emotional around it. Um, the idea of I, I can't get it because is very real and it goes across different um, communities. It's like this, like this elitism approach. I can't get it because I'm black. I've heard that. I've had many conversations with folks that said, our melanin will protect us. Can't get it because we're black. Um, I've heard, can't get it because we're New Yorkers. We're used to germs. We're immune. We've been on the subways for decades, right? Um, can't get it because I'm healthy. My mother was talking about that. She said, I'm going to come and get you out of that hospital. I said, mom, you're seven, you're almost 80. And she said, it's fine. I've taken my vitamins, <laughs> you know, for my entire life. I'm healthy. I'm coming. But this idea that we can't get it because, and it's a denial. And then it, it just, um, you know, it's a domino effect. And so I think we have to re release that elitism approach and just assume that we do have it. It's like the flu. It's either passed through, it has passed through you, by you, around you, and how you have responded, maybe based on some factors, but um, I, I would like, love to urge people to just get rid of that whole concept. It doesn't work in any moment in life, having an elitist approach, and I see it happening um, now. Thank you, Jody. Thank you so much. Miriam, Rachel, any, any thoughts that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll just uh, say, you're reminding me, you, you talked about, you know, in the hospital and getting access to um, your loved ones and the right information. Um, when we lost a big advocate in our community here in New York to COVID, Lorena Borjas um, from Queens, a, a, a transgender advocate, activist, um, she went to three hospitals here in New York. This was early on too. And, um, you know, a lot of us in the community have our adopted families, right? And so not blood relatives. And so, you know, I think a lot of us in the community are still waiting for the results to find out what happened there because we don't have that. So when I first heard that, I started um, talking to clients and because I'm a financial advisor and I advise clients what to do to protect their assets and their information, end of life comes up often, especially when planning uh, for retirement, you know, I'm telling people to fill out your medical proxies. All you have to do is print out your medical proxy form. You fill it out. You're going to need witnesses. You can ask some of your neighbors if, you know, you disinfect everything. Um, or you can go to a bank and there are essential employees there. Banks are still open. You can ask them to do it. And then that's it. You give a copy of that to whoever your medical proxy is so that you can gain that information that's so important for the LGBTQ community. Um, so that's one. Um, for anyone who's listening to this um, meeting who needs help, I've reduced my hours in order to help and volunteer and give financial information. It's like, I feel like I have to do something. So um, this is my one way of giving back. So feel free to share my contact information, but any financial question related to the stimulus package or small businesses and how I can support, reach out to me. It, it may take me a minute to get to you, but I will, um, because I, I think this has had such an impact 
on our economy. And obviously when it opens again, we'll be our place, but what about until then? What do you do? Um, so I'm happy to help in that way. Um, but Rachel, um, I, I really love the information you shared. One of the things that's top of mind for me is, can I hang out with COVID recovered people? I'm dying to socialize again. I know. And I think one of the things that we still don't know is, then this remains scary, is who really has immunity and is that immunity sufficient? So are there multiple strains of COVID? Um, we think it's just one COVID-19. Is the test sensitive and specific enough? Um, does that, there are reported cases, and of course we rely on the data from other countries just because they're so much further ahead of us. Um, as to whether or not those antibodies actually confer immunity or could you get like a milder case again? Um, how long are you, can you, how long are you infected? Right, so how long, you know, do you continue to shed the virus for just seven days? And there are reports of being shed for 21 or more days. Um, so I think unfortunately we still say stay at home, stay, like don't socialize even if somebody has had COVID. Sorry, sorry yeah. ma'am. I, I, it's just another month. Appreciate that. I know. Zoom, <laughs> Zoom party. So um, I, I want to appreciate your, your sharing your experience. Uh, you know, I'm hearing that, uh, Rachel, you're saying in a week we're going to have to remain calm. And what Judy was saying earlier, we're going to have to remain humble. There I am. Uh, and be very careful and continue to flatten the curve and really talk to our kids, our friends, our family, family of choice at home, outside of home about how we're going to navigate this smartly over the next few weeks and months. Um, and the other thing I'm really hearing loud and clear is uh, the importance of relationships, the importance of supporting one another uh and being there for the family and for whomever you consider your family whether it's your community family your family of choice um and i want to encourage everyone who wants information about support for families and for relationships to check out uh our website it is genderinframeproject.org and i also want to tell people that we've been and i'm so grateful to everyone on the team who's worked on this we've been able to move all our services uh, online. So we do provide family therapy uh, for families, all walks of life, uh, families of transgender youth and gender non-conforming and non-binary youth online. We accept Medicaid, proof of insurance, slide and scale. Don't let anything stop you from uh, giving us a call. Um, and the Ackerman Institute Clinic is also open and able to basically support you at home. We also have support groups for communities. So one thing that we've heard over and over is you know, structure your day, structure your life, stay connected, stay connected to your community, whether it's community of faith, whether it's your best friends, whether it's your, your peers, the people in your classroom. So our young people are staying connected on uh, our support groups uh, and we're, we're really excited about that. Um, and just don't work alone. Uh, if you need anything, uh, you can find the four of us here uh, somewhere. We'll uh, share the contact information. And if you want information, genderinframeproject.org. Again, thank you so much for sharing your learning, your heart, uh, and your spirit and expertise with us. And stay safe and stay well. Thank you so much.